So welcome, everybody, uh, to another session of Conscious Gatherers, number 54. And uh, besides having our regulars with Bev and Royce and myself, we're honored to have Donna back. So, Donna, welcome to the group. Hi, thank you. It's good to be back with everybody. <laughs> good. She's She's been traveling, and maybe she'll share what she's been doing and where she's been going and stuff. But um, we're glad you're with us. You're here. We're here for uh, 30 minutes, uh, as usual. And if there's anybody on the call live, towards the end, you'll be able to ask anybody some questions. Um, at this point, I don't think anybody's there. Um, but, I'll, Bev, I'll turn it over to you. All right. Well, welcome, uh, everybody. And um, there's, there's three of us around a, a table here. And then Terry is um, uh, across town, put it that way. So, um uh, you're going to probably hear a little background noise from all three of us here. But uh, welcome. This is, uh, as Terry said, episode 54, and today's date is um, November the 2nd, 2021. So it's uh, 11 uh, two, 2021. So, um, you know, all twos and ones, mm-hmm. binary numbers, aren't they? You no, know, zero and one zero. binary. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyway. Um, talking about numbers, uh, I thought I'd start off this episode of something uh, that um, I that I've been seeing uh, a lot for two to three years, and I was seeing it an awful lot, um, especially about a week ago, um, or in the last few weeks actually. So um, I thought I'm going to ask more about this, what this means, and that is the numbers nine one one or nine eleven. And uh, I always looked at it as, you know, nine is the, you know, in numerology, it means end, and 11 uh, to me means new beginnings. And so I feel that's where we're at on this earth plane. So understanding that, that is like, okay, is there more to this? And so I asked that question. And I thought this was an interesting answer that I was given. Um, uh, I, I I just said, uh, is there other what what other significance is there with this number? And, uh, and of course, the nine and eleven that I just explained, and the answer was yes and more. It says your attention is being drawn to the happenings on your Earth plane uh, tonight, which is the night I, I got this information. You uh, you heard about a, a border war. Uh, I'm talking about a border war uh, that some of the um, Illegal aliens coming up through um, our, our um, Texas and I think some other states that they may be coming through. But anyway, uh, I said that tonight you heard about a border border war brewing and more on uh, the bioweapon and so-called corrective uh, me- measures taking place. And then I heard, well, what is really happening? And um, I said, let us clarify. You are witnessing the greatest show humanity has ever displayed. People call 911 for help. Are you helping? Yes. Continue to help. That simple. But but think about this. We are witnessing the greatest show humanity has ever displayed. Just even the word displayed is Mm -hmm. an interesting word. So... um, Anyway, I thought that was a great answer, and, and I know other people see 911 also. And um, back, back to talk about 911, we think of what happened on 9-11, 2001. One. Yeah, yep. uh, as what really happened. And I uh, don't think it was a terrorist attack outside of an inside job. And I really don't want to go there right now, but uh, a lot of that information is coming out. And um, so uh, just a heads up that... Uh, those listening that they're not shocked at what's going to be brought out. But anyway, I want to go back into the numbers. And um, uh, uh, 11-11 is a number that's seen often uh, by many, many people. And what does that mean? And is that new beginnings? They're walking through the pillars into a new earth. It can mean a lot of different things. So the gateway. Gateway. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, uh, eleven and twenty-two are power numbers, so a double eleven is a twenty-two. So that's a power date. At that, it'd be interesting um, in a year when it's eleven. You know, twenty twenty-two. <laughs> That'd be very yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah. But yeah, eleven and twenty-two are power numbers in numer- numerology. So when normally 
you take a, a double number and that 11 would be a 2, but you don't convert the 11 or the 2 or the 22 because they're power numbers. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'll add that um, yesterday, Bev and I were watching some interesting things, uh, what's going on in Dallas with a lot of people gathering there um, for a great reveal, and a lot of things are coming out. And my phone, all of a sudden, I pick it up, and there's the, all the numbers there like you're going to dial a number. But what appeared above the numbers was 411-114 in great big numbers across the screen out of the clear blue. So like 411, like Bryce said, that's like the old number we used to call for information. Mm -hmm. And then dash 114. And so it's got four ones in the middle of it, 411-114. So 444. But it made me think maybe something's going to happen on Thursday on 11-4. People mm-hmm. are kind of conjecturing, you know, things that are going to be released over the next few days. But that was interesting. That just popped in by spirit. That was nothing I've ever, nothing has ever happened like that on my phone before. <laughs> I was there to witness it. So, uh, so look what just popped in my phone. So, yeah. 411-114. Yeah, and 4 is the number of manifestation on the earth. So four and four ones and the four, like bringing in that 11-11 into the earth plane, getting heaven more into earth and revealing more and more truth. So we can all wake up even more. <laughs> <laughs> and it has it has the reflectivity built yeah, into mirror. it, as above, so below, yeah. all of that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like uh, also, that those the additions of that is 12, yeah. which is a three, yeah. And the three is the number of God yeah, because of the three. trinities and stuff. He, uh, yeah. that, that God works in, tri- in triples, in threes. Yeah. So, right. And also uh, the joke I always do, you know, one, one plus one is three, and no one ever gets it. They go, well, no, it's not. And I say, yeah, it is. If I'm with my wife and we get together and we have a baby, it's one and one is three. Sorry. You know, that, and that's creation. So the, uh-huh. the, so that's interesting. Those The four and the four ones and the four add up to 12, which is a three. So that's yeah. kind of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, there's a, a lot of meaning in, in um, uh, Geomantria, and I know a lot of people are really into it. And I know, Royce, you, you experience consecutive numbers. You want to go into that at all? Well, well. at first I was saying the triplet numbers like 555, which I've seen mm-hmm. for a long time. Yeah. It, just, it speaks to me inside, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, when I see it, it lets me know, you know, I'm, I'm right where I'm supposed to be right at that moment. Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, but I've, I've been seeing the, a lot of like 1, 2, 3 numbers, mm-hmm. you know, or uh, mm-hmm. 1, 1, 2, 3, stuff like that. And, and like today, you know, the 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, that actually boils down to Fibonacci sequence because 1 plus 1 is 2. And two plus one is three. So there you have your three and one, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's a kind of a powerful day, really. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. As I've said before, there's a lot of things going uh, beyond the um, no, veil. or It's really not beyond the veil, but things that we're not seeing. So a lot of things are happening on this earth right now, and sometimes we'll get snippets of it. But um, And, you know, we brought up many of these um you know, some of the uh, messages, channelings, whatever you want to call it, that I received that something, you know, uh, the real, something about rocking our planet. And, and so, you know, be ready and, um, you know, stay centered. And so you know, this week I think there's going to be more drops like that. So just remember, uh, the listeners, that to remain centered um, as we hear some of this because some of it's going to be perplexing. I got that word um, last few days. Confusion and, and perplexing, and so um, just be aware, and um, and and you just act from the center of yourself, and uh, not don't go into any fear. Yeah, yeah put, no fear. It, put it through your filter, your internal filter, and that like like Terry says, talking about the heart. You know, how does how's your heart interpreting it? Does it feel right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and an easy way to do that is called heart-focused breathing. And simply, 
uh, anytime you feel anxious, fear, or something comes over overwhelming, simply start breathing through your heart. Feel the breath in and out slowly through the heart and get a rhythm to it, and you can actually put your hand over your heart so the total focus is on your heart and breathing through that. And just that little trick there, that little technique will really shift the physiology in your body and you will move from that other that state you were and move to a more calm, uh, more relaxed state. Mm-hmm. It works. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. definitely works. Yeah. If you're in that anxiety, which, you know, we're seeing around the world uh-huh. with everything that's but, but going Deborah, on. You said perplexing, you know, as a word that you got. The word I got yeah. about expecting things... Eye popping. <laughs> eye popping. <laughs> like the eyes pop out of your head when I can't believe that or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is part of it. <laughs> I actually got the word perplexion, yeah, perplexion. <laughs> which okay. is a word I don't use, but uh, it makes sense. But I think a lot of it is going to be eye popping from what some of the things that I'm hearing. If it uh, comes to yeah. fruition, I guess we'll find out. It's actually very exciting for those of us that are, you know, really want to know the truth and want to see the truth come out. So if we let go of our past concepts and things we've been told and uh, expected to believe, and if you really just want to really know the truth and be in the center of God and you're open, it's actually very, very exciting times. So it's just the, you know, (laughs) if you're kind of stuck in, well, stuck in certain perceptions or concepts and haven't learned to let those go yet, then it, then it is going to be eye-popping and perplexing. But the more we open up to the flow and the real truth, we get more in the flow of life, and life gets more and more exciting every day. And the truth it just becomes like, oh, my gosh, finally it's here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Finally it's here. We've been calling this for, you know, beyond mainstream media and all the ways we've been programmed as we grew up. So we're excited over here, <laughs> and we're just thinking, how are we going to share with people maybe that are perplexed? We're here to help serve and share, uh-huh. you know, to help bring them through it as things become unveiled. We'll have to, yeah. all of us that understand this, that are on the call, um, or open to these things, that's when we will be able to help with the 911 is, you know, to be there for people kind of as a rock, a pillar, mm-hmm. to help them understand. Yep. And that goes for... Um, all of you that are listening to this podcast, because you're you're listening to this podcast for a reason, and just remember that hey, you know, stand up, stand straight, and speak your truth, and that's going to help other people speak their truth, and and don't be afraid that you may give a incorrect answer, and if you can answer, then you say I don't know, but there there's things that you can say to help alleviate somebody else's anxiety. And it works. So it's just preparing yourself, and and you be that pillar that um, will assist other people. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Bev, I found that what you sent me this week that was the channeling from Matthew to his mother. I found that quite interesting, as you had said it was. Um, you know, if you wanted to share some of that, um, it, it was you know kind of current, up-to-date, and put us kind of focused, you know what I mean? Um, and, Bev, I think you might interpret it a, uh, a little bit more concise than I have because, um, you know, we're in, in the mix of it, and it was just, I thought it was a great summary of, of what's kind of going on and explain to the audience who Matthew is and, and uh, what he's um, and who he comes through. Uh, okay. <laughs> if you Excuse me, I should have pulled this up on the computer here. All right, Matthew is a young boy. Well, uh, uh, he died, I don't know how many years ago, qu- quite a while ago, and I think he was 17, something like that. Um, he was a, a, a teenager, and uh, he passed away. I, I, I don't know how he passed away, uh, but the realm he went and he he or the he was still within the earth realm to a degree but he could see everything that was going on and his uh he told his mother that he would assist her and so they had a communication going on for years 
and it continues to this day, mother. So I, I'm not sure if his actual biological mother has now passed on, but he, he continues as uh, through. I'm really not sure through, through somebody else, but he's still using the word mother, and so um, uh, it uh, addresses what's going on in this earth, and then it, it will take it to even um, to another level. And um, I, uh, one of the things he just uh, was talking about this, I think it's this week he, he put this out. It's called Matthew's Message to the World, so you can look it up under Matthew's Messages. Um, and uh, there's a few sites uh, online that um, will show that, or you go directly to their site. But I know one thing was uh, regarding the, um, can I say that on uh, YouTube? Um, the the things that you get stuck in your, your arm. I know, I have to watch that, because I know other people get um, censored from YouTube for using that word. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? In today's world, Pretty soon we'll be able to speak our truth without any censorship. And boy, am I looking forward to doing that so we don't have to Amen. speak in code. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, yeah. But anyway, um, it's just that a lot of people are very afraid of what that can do to our DNA and, and all of the, a lot of fear mongering going out there. And, uh, and I'm not saying that this is a healthy thing for your, your body. However, um, those that chose to do this, that's fine. That's up to them and, um, and uh, others choose not to do that because it makes them feel very sick to be even around people that have had this. Um, but um, one thing is that um, it the any uh, so-called change or targeted uh, DNA targeting, leave it, I think I can use those words. Um, Just speak, speak those, freely and don't worry about any censorship. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Um, that... Um, any targeting into the DNA by the vaccines um, and the, the MNRA, um, which is a chemical, and I think it's a there's there's different aspects of that that is used to put into the body, and, um, and does that keep the um, uh, COVID uh, nineteen away? And I think we're finding out it doesn't do that much, but but the what comes out in the news that it does. So you know you got to believe what is best for you. And then, no, that's your choice, your decision. However, uh, those of, uh, there are many people that have understood, uh, you know, as we're moving along in our ascension process, that this is not something that you want to do. And um, those that are in their more crystalline body, and so our cell structure is changing, that this um, spike protein will not adhere to the crystalline structure that is part of our body. Um, I'm saying it totally different, I think, than what Matthew had, had said, but similar. Um, I don't know, Terry, if you remember any more on that, but that's good to know because uh, is that going to affect us as, as we go through our ascension process? And I was well, told it may slow it down a little bit, but then it's like going to slough off. But go ahead, Terry. Yeah, well, that brings me to the point where um, – Let's 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 talk about the truth of everything, um, and what what's happening with all that. The whole the whole this whole thing that's going on right now is really a battle between light and dark, uh, in in many ways. And you know we have been so conditioned. When I say we, the the human race and and where we've been brought up from from time we were born, um, and the dark side basically it has been in control. And, and taking control simply through everything that, that we're, we learn in school, um, that we're taught through what our governments do, our health system. It's all a, a means to get us to, to dumb down, to follow instructions, and to take all this. But the bottom line is, and which I want to bring up and I've brought up before, there's nothing that can happen to us that's permanent uh, in this physical world. And anything can be changed as soon as you awake and know what's going on. And I've, told, I've used the analogy before, um, you, know, you take a drop of, of an ocean and take it out. It's not a drop of the ocean. It's the ocean, its completeness in that one sample or one drop. Um, and it's, so what in the beginning, when we had create, when creator was creator and there was nothing else, and Creator used the process of creating, which we have, were created in His, in his likeness and image. Um, 
and I'm using his just as it could be her too, because there's uh, uh, the creator is uh, Andromedus. It's not male or female. It just is. I am. It's an energy or consciousness. Yeah. It's an it's a consciousness of the energy of t- a total, and of what anything that the creator creates, it's part of. You can't the, you can't have a creation that's not part of the creator within them. And so a better analogy of what we are. So we are, of our essence, the true creator. We are not the creator, but we are creator, if you understand what I mean. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're just, creator chose to experience a different state of the I am. So the I am is the creator, allness of everything, and then that's unconditioned consciousness. And as soon as we make a condition of it, I am Terry. I've conditioned that I am now. I have changed the state of that, the energy, the vibration of that I am into something that is tangible. So think of us as the creator in form, okay? Terry's not the creator, but the creator's within me. I and my father are one. And the best example that I just heard someone say that I'm going to adopt as my own, imagine water, and water can change its state, its consciousness, its vibration, and turn into an ice cube. Even though you have a solid ice cube, that water is contained in there. I, the ice cube, and my element of water are one and the same. But we don't recognize the water. If someone had never known what an ice cube was before and they saw an ice cube, that's what it would be to them. It's an ice cube. Mm -hmm. But it contains the water within it. So that's what I'm choosing to use as the analogy of my creator within me, and I'm the ice cube of the creator within me. So (laughs) where I was going with that is, if we are, and if that's the truth, it's my truth, it doesn't necessarily have to be your truth or the truth, but assuming it is, there's nothing that can harm the creator. The creator created everything, okay? He gave us free will to do with our creations as we choose to. But if that's the truth, then how can anything out here harm us at all? It can, it can be taken away, and it can change in a heartbeat as soon as we realize that we're not the ice cube, that's just the state we're in now, we're the water. We're the I am. So I don't care if I get jabbed or I don't get jabbed or I got, I can change it in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. As If you had the faith of a mustard seed, you could move a mountain. Yeah. That's, that's not well an analogy. That's the truth. You just have to know who you are. You have to see that mountain out there and say, I choose that mountain to be over here. I see that mountain. Isn't it nice how the mountain moved over here? Feel it, live it, and be it. And we don't know how, but Creator will move that mountain. Because we're not to know how. We're just to believe and trust. Amen. So it's all starting to come you know, come together when you start these things coming into your world. And so what we're doing now, experiencing what, what Bev has said, um, is this this fantastic show. Enjoy it. Because things are being brought to both sides, the ones that are awakened and the ones that aren't awakened right now, to, to, to say, wait a minute, all this doesn't make sense. What, how can I make sense of this? And it will start changing the thinking mechanism of people wherever they are. And that was the reason of Earth experience, of doing what you want, when you want, free will. And, of course, that's where karma came in. You know, that's all part of the lesson. You're here to learn who you are, the water, not the ice cube, and then be able to create the ice cube whenever you want to. Mm-hmm. Or steam. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> or steam. <laughs> yeah. I'm complete. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Terry. That was really a good analogy and a lot to think about. So anybody has ice cubes in their glass, they're going to remember this. So, <laughs> you know, that's a neat way to do it, a neat way to say it. 
So, um, all right. Um, you, you were talking about, you know, you don't have to fear anything. And um, earlier today, we were, the three of us were talking about some of the experiences that we've had and, um, and where you go into action if you need to go into action with no fear. And so um, either Royce or, or Donna, do you want to discuss any of your experiences? Well, I remember several years back now having an experience where I was I was in bed and all of a sudden I got a sense that something was about to enter my room and coming from the hallway was this well it would look like a monster like a like a werewolf actually it was all black and it was snarling and uh uh, coming at me very fast, and I just kind of looked at it. You know, I was a bit befuddled as to what I was seeing because it was totally unexpected, but I had no fear whatsoever, and that was the key because when the thing got right up to me, there wasn't anything there for it to feed on, and so it just disappeared. There was no fear. And so, you know, when you find yourself in that place of of your your fear has frozen you and you, and you just you can't see a way out of a situation, just go into your center and and know within your heart that fear is a created thing and you're the one creating it. And just with having that knowing you can put a stop to it and go another route. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever is making you afraid, just it becomes not anything to be afraid of. You know, whether it disappears right before your eyes or not, uh, I don't know. Maybe it'll turn into something else or you'll see it for the for the truth that, it, no, this was just something to help me grow. So, mm-hmm. That's my little story. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, like, you know, that talks about Terry, as you said, um, you know, this battle of light and dark. And so, yeah, there are dark entities out there that feed off of fear. And, and um, so they may use different um, ways of coming at us, or if you want to call it that. But it's like, yeah, if you stay in your, your presence, um, the true presence of, of who you truly are, and um, th- th- nothing can touch you. We are, again, extremely pro- uh, powerful human beings, and everything is within every cell of our body. We talked about this in our last podcast. So, you know, it's well, us. Also, like, yeah, let me bring something else here that's, that, that everybody might not realize. Okay. If what I said was true, and I believe it to be true, then when we're saying dark side, light side, light, light and dark, remember, God's in that dark side also. That 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 cube, that other state is choosing out of free will to do to serve itself, and God's not going to interfere because of the free will. Now, will we will that turn around? Yes, eventually I believe everything will turn around. But so I'm not I'm not pitting a, a light and dark against each other. I'm just saying that's what we're experiencing in our world. Because we are a world of dichotomy, of opposites. And it's there, the contrast. If you don't have contrast, you don't have movement. You don't know what, where to go and to use your free will as you choose. That's why we're given it, to see how we use it. So remember, And that's where, where the Master Jesus came in and said, love your neighbor as yourself. Turn the cheek, if they're hit on one side, turn the other side. Because that is your brother who's acting out doing horrible things maybe, but he's still the water within, the Christ within, the God within, the creator. Just he's not, he's choosing to use it in a different way. And that's the hard element to understand, and that's where that decree comes in, you know, make no comparisons, um, make no judgments, and delete your need to understand because you don't know why that person is acting as they are and what role they're playing based on what they've done in the past with whomever they're working on here now. 
Those three injunctions are very important, and sometimes they're very challenging to keep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that letting go of that last one, it's uh, you know, it all boils down to what what's going on within us, mm-hmm. <laughs> each of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I could add. I I had a attack. We could call it. I I have to keep this really brief because it's actually a long story, but. Uh, um, where a being, you know, that was that tries to hold back people's awareness, and we were spreading a lot of awareness around the planet, and then something happened to me where I was told I was lasered, the kind of laser that kills people, <laughs> and um, so it put me down in a very difficult state for three years, and um, and then I finally had to get in touch with my anger at God for <laughs> how could you let this happen to me? I do such good things on the planet, you know. And um, and so um, I let myself feel the anger, get in touch with it and feel it, and it sent me through my body, my liver, and then I end up in the, the pillow, the heart of God, I call it the darkness. It was like the womb of creation, just the center of all that is. And I was just infused with so much love, and it was beyond words. It's hard to put it into words, but... I came back into my body then and I was looking at my arms that had had this horrible rash for three years and I thought, oh my gosh, I've been resisting this. Uh, like, like, how can I get rid of this, right? And I was just flooding my arms with love and, I, and like looking at my arms and just putting love into every cell and like the key to my DNA was changing into love and unity and I thought this is the true this is the true healing when we come into love in every cell of our bodies. Mm-hmm. And then things started to turn around. And then I was feeling so much love, I thought, can I bring this being to me that so-called did this to me? Because I saw the being that did it. So I gave myself, I mean, I went day by day, but I kept feeling so much love. I thought, I'm not ready to call this being in yet. But after two weeks of still being in this state, I called in that being and and he came, I mean, instantly we merged, like we merged together, and he went off into the light. So it was like, you know, and then after that, whenever at times some of these other beings have come in that are so-called doing horrible things on the planet, <laughs> the reptilians, whatever you want to call them, and some of them would like line up and come through this love, and, and I would just see him go off into the light, the ones that are ready, so... It was quite an experience. Um, um, I don't know what else to say about it right now, but just uh, kind of demonstrating what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes we, like you said, Terry, I had to go into the need uh, or let go of the need to understand during the earlier process when I was in a lot of pain, you know, trying to figure out why did this happen and and people could say, oh, you were afraid of that thing. And I, but no, I had no fear. It still happened. But it was a big lesson for me um, to even go deeper. And I did through all that pain and suffering. I went way deeper into more compassion, you know, for beings. And uh, there's just so much to learn here on this yeah. planet. Oh, my God. Yeah, there, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wrote these words down because it's really – we're – we're understanding our true essence, and so it's our power within. It's God, as, as what you're saying, uh, Terry, our creator, or whatever word you want to use. And then when you understand that fully, and um, then there is no fear, you know, at all. Right. Um, you know, so it's, yeah. uh, yeah, that doesn't mean jump off a bridge and yeah. see if you can fly, but um, it's just really, we can do anything, get rid of your rash, or as as Terry, we're talking about um, our DNA and the chemicals and things that we get in our body, and and, and uh, sometimes we need a little help to wash it out. But when we fully understand who we are, then nothing can touch us, mm-hmm. except our own love. Yeah, and as beings get more exposed, they've been doing all these things. As the real news comes out. Um, I just have compassion for them. Really, I do get upset sometimes and start cussing a little bit at what's going on, <laughs> I'll admit, but they're being, they're going through their lessons too and their growth, and so I just feel you have to have compassion for the whole big picture as it's unfolding, and that'll mm-hmm. bring less fear and less reaction also to understand we're all just here going through our path of learning. 
And these people are going to need assistance unless they decide to take another route and let them be because that's their path that they chose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, again, if they ask, mm-hmm. uh, instead of us trying to shake them and saying, can't you understand this? Because mm-hmm. um, sometimes we want to do that. It's like, nope, you got to back off and let them be because it's none of our business. You know, really it's none of our business unless we're asked. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, that's, uh, that's all of all of us are creator mm-hmm. and uh, and with many paths that we that that each of us follow within within creator source <laughs> <How's> that <laughs> there you go well all you, right. you know, we probably could keep going all night but we've we're over our 30 minutes for this podcast and but i i've enjoyed every minute of this donna i've enjoyed you coming back and being with us and look forward to hopefully you might be here in two weeks with us. And as always, Indeed. Bev and Royce uh, have great things to add to us. So, mm-hmm. ladies, it's time to say good night to, to our audience. And uh, we'll be back in two weeks on the 16th at 7 p.m. again, Eastern Time. And uh, not to worry if we ever get blocked, knocked off of YouTube because we're not recording this on YouTube. We have this, and we can, we've. We're actually putting it up on a podcast uh, platform also, so we'll keep you posted. Never worry. We're here. <laughs> oh, Ladies, have, you know, please have your final just, say a thank you or good night, and we'll move move on. Okay, just real quick, because this came up this past week, um, uh, if uh, any, any of the listeners um, want to get a hold of one of us, um, each of us have our own specialties, I believe, and I'll say it that way. Um, of what we do, and uh, on our um, when you watch our podcast, there is a phone number. Um, it is, and I can give that to you right now. It is uh, it's Terry's um, personal answering. I don't know what you call it, Terry, <laughs> but uh, the the um, uh, contact number is eight six four nine 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 three zero zero eight. So if you want to talk uh, to uh, Terry, and Terry, uh, just if you can do a quick uh, synopsis of what you do. Yeah, uh, that number when you call will get a message, and you'll be able to leave who you want to talk to and leave your your phone number, and the, the person will get back to you on that. Um, but, you know, my expertise or what I'm really comfortable and good at is in consciousness and language help people shift in their language to help shift uh, in their lives and the experience that they are, are manifesting. So, uh, and I also do uh, hypnosis, uh, those two things. Okay, thank you. And Royce? Well, I, I love to uh, try to connect with the animals. Some, sometimes they speak to me and let me know what their problems are, and sometimes they don't, so I just I honor that. Um, and the same with people. I, I like to work remotely with uh, the energies of people's bodies to, to help them to uh, locate what's going wrong or where a problem might be or where it's stemming from. Um, you know, we each have so much that we do, it's really kind of hard to put it, boil it down into words. So I'll just start off with those two. <laughs> Did you give your phone number? It would be that one. Yeah. Oh, it's on the yeah. thing. And then um, uh, uh, much of what I do is intuitive counseling, um, and I can do that remotely from you know, with anybody um, via telephone. Unless you want to do a face-to-face, I use, just usually use a telephone, and that works. Um, and also I'll do energy and body balancing, and um, I do that manually so in other words i need the body here mm-hmm. <laughs> uh however i i also work with people if they have any issues i can project my consciousness to their body and make things move so um done that quite a few times mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes people call me and I'm almost in a panic if something's going on and i can i you know i take my consciousness right inside their body and mm-hmm. try to alleviate be it a, a blood clot or something like that so it's happened um, sure has. <laughs> so those are the two main things that that um, that uh, I do, and um, I don't know, Donna, you're you're all over the the country, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, doing your spiritual journey everywhere. 
Yeah. But I don't know if you want to add anything about yourself. Um, well, that's just it. Um, going around working with portals and grids and people everywhere and doing work remotely with all that also and on the ground, <laughs> helping people detox and, and come into their body temple, you know, so, um, and and crystalline consciousness, we'll say, and um yeah, it is hard to put into words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, I know we've gone. A, I had a long, uh, a long um, uh, podcast today. We appreciate you all listening to us. And Terry, I'll let yeah. you finish up. Well, well, it's good. I just uh, say good night, ladies, and we appreciate everybody. We love everybody, and uh, thank you for uh, sharing your time with us, as we enjoy sharing our time with you. So until next. Uh, time on the 16th. I'm signing off. Ladies, sign off. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> from from the fullness of my heart, I want you all to know how much I love you, and I mean that truthfully. I love you the way you are, and I think you're beautiful inside and out, and I thank you for being here. Beautiful. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.